The Bible is our invitation to the biggest event in all of history. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 and 17 in the Amplified Translation says, For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a shout of command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the blast of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain on the earth will simultaneously be caught up, raptured together with them, the resurrected ones in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will always be with the Lord. Now, I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want to miss this. I wouldn't want to miss that glorious day when the Lord comes down from heaven and snatches his beloved church. He will do it suddenly. He will do it quickly and without warning. The Bible said, For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a shout of command, with the voice of the archangel and with the blast of the trumpet of God. When that trumpet sounds, where will you be? Will you be caught up in the sky to meet the Lord? When that trumpet sounds, what state will your heart be in? Will you be living in sin or waiting patiently, faithfully, prayerfully for the Lord. When that trumpet sounds, will it be a day of reckoning for you? Will you take into account the fact that you were given an invitation to this most spectacular and glorious gathering, but you didn't take enough care to read that invitation? Will it be a day where you fall to your knees in complete despair, asking yourself, how did I miss it? How did I get left behind? As you listen right now, I encourage you to take heed. Pay careful attention. The day of the Lord will come like a thief. It will come at a day and time unknown to anyone on this earth. But when that day comes, what a glorious and spectacular gathering in the clouds it will be. Don't miss out on the biggest event the world has ever seen. I find it interesting that the Bible uses the words, take heed. To take heed is to pay special attention. To take heed is to add an extra level of consideration than you would normally. Before I take things further, I would like to submit to you this short passage of scripture. Mark chapter 13, verse 28 to 33. Now learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branch has already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So you also, when you see these things happening, know that it is near, at the doors. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. But of that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Take heed, watch and pray, for you do not know when the time is. So here's the first time we come across the phrase, take heed meaning we are to pay special attention when it comes to the return of Jesus. And how does one take heed, you may ask? Well, the Bible says, take heed, watch and pray. Watch and pray. Saints, let me ask you a question. Are you watching? Are you praying? Are you observing that the Bible says in the last days, perilous times shall come? The word perilous means full of danger or full of risk. So that means we should be observing for the days when there is danger in this world. Danger when it comes to our health as humans. Danger or risk when it comes to economy. Danger or risk when it comes to nature itself. Perilous times shall come. And in context to our two key words, we are to take heed. We are to take heed and take careful consideration when we notice that men are lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, unthankful, 
unholy. Now, I could go on and point out the entire list described in the Bible, but there are further occasions where the words take heed are brought to our attention. Matthew 24 verse 4 says, And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. Once again, you and I are to take heed. Be careful that no one deceives you. This means that there will come a time when there will be a prevalence of deception. And it's a scary thought because the Bible says even the elect will be deceived if possible, if you read Matthew 24, verse 24. Jesus warned us and advised us to take heed and be on high alert in order to discern deception. And so back to my opening passage of Scripture in Mark chapter 13, verse 28 to 33. Verse 29 says, So you also, when you see these things happening, know that it is near, at the doors. This parable given to us by Jesus is meant to serve as a warning to all of us. His return is near, at the doors. And so my message to you is, take heed, because 2 Timothy chapter 4 tells us that a time will come when some will no longer tolerate sound teaching. They will no longer tolerate godly teaching. They will not be able to stand to hear the pure gospel of Jesus Christ, the pure, undiluted, unadulterated gospel of truth, a gospel that preaches repentance. So men will reject this sound teaching, and instead, they will live by their own desires. They'll scratch their itching ears by surrounding themselves with teachers who approve of their lifestyles and tell them what they want to hear. Take heed, man of God. Take heed, woman of God. Do not fall into the trap of listening to a gospel that approves your sinful lifestyle. The gospel should challenge you to righteousness. It should push you toward holiness. The gospel should convict you to repent and fall at the feet of Jesus Christ seeking his mercy. Saints, take heed. Take heed of Matthew 24, verse 7. It says, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. Take heed of Matthew 24, verse 10, which says, And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Take heed that lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. So as you listen, I will once again ask you the questions. Are you watching? Are you praying? Are you observing that the Bible says in the last days, perilous times shall come? Now let me remind you that there are two kingdoms. There's the kingdom of light, and there's the kingdom of darkness. When you surrender to Jesus, when you give your life to Jesus, do you know what happens? you're transformed from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. The moment we received Jesus Christ, we went from being in darkness to being children of his marvelous light. Now let me tell you something. Did you know that darkness is irritated by light? Darkness can't stand light. Do you know what that means? It means that the devil can't stand you. But equally, it means that God Almighty will empower you. Luke chapter 10 verse 19 says, Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall hurt you. Jesus is telling us here that we have power over the enemy. There is nothing the devil can do to you when you know who you are in Christ. Now, perhaps you need some encouragement because you've come under attack from the enemy. But I want to tell you, to encourage you even, God is ready to sharpen your weapons. He's ready to give you a new strategy. He's ready to renew your strength. In this season you're in, you've got to know that the Word of God is available to you as a believer. Start declaring that. You're more than a conqueror. You are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. Your hands are blessed. Your feet are blessed. You're blessed in the city. You are blessed in the field. God is walking with you. With God, all things are possible. And saints, if you can just maintain your belief, if you can just remain strong in faith, God will come through for you.
regardless of what the devil throws your way, keep your trust in the rock of ages. I believe that the greatest and most trusted source of knowledge for this life and the life to come is the Bible. The Bible teaches us in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 to 17, that all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Now, this same Bible, this Bible that contains all of these scriptures that were breathed out by God, also clarifies in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, saying, Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. So people will have the purity of the truth of God at their disposal, but there will be some who will choose to attach themselves to information that comes from sources that are related to demonic activity. That's what the Bible means when it says some will devote themselves to teaching of demons. Think about it. Even the Bible teaches that the devil himself is the ruler of the world in which we live. John 8:44 explains that the devil was a murderer from the beginning, and that he has nothing to do with the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character, for he is a liar and the father of lies. However, society in many cases has chosen to follow after principles associated with the teachings of demons instead of adhering to the source which we know to be the truth, the Word of God. And let me clarify something. Teachings of demons are not what many think them to be. They are not necessarily related to overt evil, but it's more of a subtle, deceptive evil. The teachings or doctrines of demons will tell you things like, you can sin as much as you want because God's grace is unlimited and his mercy endures forever. The teachings or doctrines of demons will encourage you to live for yourself, take care of yourself, and build wealth. But in both of those examples, there is only a little bit of truth mixed in with lies. What those examples don't tell you is that Yes, God has given us grace and his mercy endures forever, but God is not mocked because whatever a person sows, they will also reap. And on the second example, God does want to take care of you and see you prosper, but prosperity is not always monetary. A person can prosper financially, but be dead spiritually. And I believe it's always better to be rich in Christ to be rich spiritually than materially, because what does it profit a man to gain the whole world but lose his soul? So as Christians, we really should not be surprised that people are turning away from the truth at such alarming rates. But we should also realize that we cannot just lay down and watch it happen. I want you to listen to what 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2-4 to says, because in his instruction to Timothy, the Apostle Paul intensely stated, Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. Paul needed his son in the faith to understand that his responsibility was to stand firmly on the word of God because it was the truth. He needed him to understand that when others were turning away to doctrines of demons, he still needed to be teaching and preaching the truth. He needed him to understand that when people began to look for teachers that would cater to their feelings and avoid the truth, that he needed to continue to give them what they needed and not what they wanted. Paul needed Timothy to understand that no matter what things look like all around him, that he simply must continue in the words and doctrines that he had been instructed in and not in the doctrines that were leading people astray. In Galatians chapter 1, verse 6 to 8, the Apostle Paul, 
in his letter to the Galatians, also stated, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel, which is not another, but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel to you than what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. Paul knew there was only one truth, and he also knew his enemy, the devil, wanted to pervert that truth to keep people from being in right relationship with God. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This is the truth we need to hold on to. Salvation can only be found in Jesus Christ, and there is no other name under heaven that can bring salvation to mankind. There is only one God, and only one mediator between God and man, and his name is Jesus Christ. When Jesus walked the earth, the first message that he preached when he began his ministry was to repent and believe the gospel. When we as believers in Jesus Christ follow any other teaching, philosophy, or doctrine, we are being led astray from the truth, led astray from a sincere and pure devotion to Christ, and being led astray to serve the devil's world, which is the kingdom of darkness. In the end, according to the word of truth, this is not the side that we are going to want to be on. Revelation 12 verse 9 declares, So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. God's word and his truth will prevail. No other teaching, philosophy, or doctrine will be able to overcome what God has declared to be right. And God's greatest creation, mankind, will be able to live with him forever in his great kingdom, providing we make the right choice to follow his doctrine and not the dangerous doctrines of the world. Psalm 37, verse 4 and 5. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. The promises of God are vast and placed throughout the Bible. For instance, if you want wisdom, take a walk through the book of Proverbs. The Bible says in Proverbs 3, verse 5, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends so we can keep making them. For more videos like this, hit the subscribe button. And remember to click on the notification bell. Also, be sure to check out our other videos as well. Thanks for watching.